if you have a lace cushion which is basically some styrofoam covered by cloth you can then pin your motif in but you have to work on the reverse to do a ground so turn everything over and you'll be working on the wrong side of the work so if you have a lace cushion and you like working on one you would then just pin everything into place So once you've pinned your work onto the lace cushion, you then crochet between the different parts of the motif. You can use different kind of fillings, but for a first filling it's good to just use simple chains so that you get the hang of it. The traditional way is not by using a lace cushion, but by tacking your work onto another cloth so that's if you want to work with a lace cushion if you've got one otherwise you can do it the traditional way which I'll show you now so now I'm going to show you the traditional way of making a ground or infill on a motif I'm using a plain piece of cotton with no pattern on and I'm using I'm using blackout material that they use for curtains it's a nice thick tough piece of cloth the main thing is that there's no stretch so you take your motif place it upside down on your cloth and then you take needle and thread and you tack the motif into place I'm just going to put a few pins in Nothing moves. And as you can see, if you've got it on a piece of cloth, it is easier to work with. It's also easy to take your work with you, and you can work anywhere then. The main purpose of this is just to make sure that nothing moves. So it's just to hold it into place. Then I'll be making the background on the roses. I will be using this edge to attach the chains to. I won't be attaching it to the end of the petal itself but to the chain that the last petal was made on the reason for that is if you attach your ground to the edge of the petal it'll pull the flower out of shape when you secure the leaf make, it, make sure that it's lying flat and that the whole profile of the leaf is on show so once you've got your motif tacked down, it's time to put the edge on. Again, look to see which is the right way and the wrong way. And you have to 
again sew this face down so now you need to arrange it so once you've pinned it into place you're again going to tack all the way around to secure the edge to the cloth so now we're going to do the background there are several different stitches that you can use to make a background the most commonly used one is one with two picots or else one with a clone stitch but when you're first starting off it's better to just make straight chains make a loop to start again make sure you've got a decent enough tail because you can need that to sew it in at the end and then take two loops on the edge those are the two loops that you didn't include in with the cord and now it's just a question of making chains so make a few chains see where you are and if if it fits just make a single crochet and attach it to the, the other side try and never make more than seven chains in one bar you can also use double crochet you can use trebles double trebles you can use whatever means you want just done a double there and I'm going to do a treble into the next leaf So you just make chains, doubles, trebles, whatever, and you form a little network. It's best to start at an edge and work your way up. So I could go that way too, but it'll be easier to go this way and then fill this gap first. I'll be taking occasional pictures of my progress.
so when you look at the finished work you can see that some are trebles, double trebles, just some plain chains but I always aim to make less than seven a distance of seven chains so now comes the fun bit I'll be taking off the tacking thread and it'll finally be finished I use a thread cutter to remove it because it's easier to work with that than with a pair of scissors but otherwise you can do it with a pair of scissors. <laughs> 